Hello guys. Since Wix is now disabling the Mailchimp app from the Wix app store, I'm going to show you guys how you can create your own custom integration without having to pay any monthly subscription to any other platform to send your subscribers from your website to your Mailchimp account. Now, to begin, of course, you need a Wix site and you need a Mailchimp account, all right? First thing you need from your Mailchimp account is go to your account, then slash account slash API to get your API key. If you don't have an API key, it's going to ask you to create one, create the API key and then copy it from here. All right, now keep it aside or come back to this page uh, when you see I need the API key in the video. Now, the second thing is go to your audience list and make sure you have opened the correct list that you want these subscribers to be pushed into then click on settings and then click on audience name and defaults once you go here you'll find your list id again take this list id and keep it in a safe place or keep this page open until i show you what to do with it now on your big site what you're going to do over here is that you're going to start creating some input elements to capture your um, data. So in this video, I'm just going to use uh, capture the first name, last name and email. And of course, a button to submit the data like this. All right. Now you can go ahead and change the labels, change the placeholders. And then after that, click on the input element, change the ID of the input elements to uh, define its purpose. For example, F name for first name, L name for last name, and then email for email. And then you can also go ahead and click on changing the placeholder and button. Also, you can name it to something like submit. And then once you've done that, under event handlers, click on on click and then click enter. Now this will create an event handler. Once you've done all this, your page is going to look something like this. So you have your first name, last name, email, submit, and then I have a feed. So this is a normal text field that I have written uh, incomplete field and I have used the property spanner to hide it by default and I've changed the ID to error. So I'm going to show this whenever an error occurs. All right. Now, Inside the event handler that we created by clicking on the property panel after clicking the submit button, I have a if else statement. So it is basically this code will be available in the link given in the description. So no need to copy it from the screen. So basically, this is it checks the validity if all the elements of the all the input elements have a value as required, and then it proceeds to send make the API call to Mailchimp. If the elements are not valid, it will simply show you an error message. All right. Now, before you can write this line one over here, you actually need to go to your code files under backend, create a new web module or a new uh, web module as it will show over here. Sometimes it might show just in the middle, like it's showing add file over here. It will show add new web module. If you don't have any, else click on this plus icon over here and create new web module name it mailchimp and then once you have that this is where you import a new npm package so we use the npm package called axios so to install axios click on plus sign beside packages and click on install new package now this window will open up once this opens up uh, search for axios and then you will have the prompt over here uh, which will allow you to install it. Once you have installed it, the Axios package will pop up over here. Once you've done that, on the first line, write down constant CONST Axios is equal to require Axios. And then next line, you have to write down the actual URL. So let me break up the URL for you. So the first part is, of course, HTTPS. And then what you see over here, US20, this actually comes from your account. So go to your Mailchimp account and check your URL bar. See that before admin.mailchimp.com, I have US20. Now for you, it might be something else. It might be US2, 3, 98, 95, 96, whatever. So copy whatever you have for your own URL, Mailchimp account URL. This is your server and paste it over here in place of US20. 
and then dot api dot mainstream.com then the api version which is 3.0 and then slash list and then this what you see over here this string of numbers with uh, small a at the last this is the list id so remember list id that i made you open at the beginning of the video now you take that without the dot over here i don't know why these guys put the dot without the dot and then paste it over here after list slash and then another slash and then finally members this is your url and now if you remember that i made you open your api key as well the page where it contains your api key so go ahead and copy it and paste it over here now this will be your api key now as far as the function is concerned you can just copy paste this but to give you an idea of what's happening at the top over here, I'm receiving the values from the front end. So I'm receiving the first name, last name, and email, and then I'm posting it to this URL. So you can see URL, the HTTP method I'm using is post, and I'm sending some authorization in the head headers, HTTP headers, because I want MailChimp to know that this, this URL, uh, this request is being made for my account, and I want this subscriber to add it to this list over here. All right. And then you have data and then json.stringify bracket curly brackets and then you have email address which is the email address of the user status subscribe and then the merge fields now you can have additional merge fields over here if you want what you need to do for that is go to your audience list and go to audience fields and merge tags so if you can see over here is that I have first name and last name fields and their merge tag is f name and l name all in caps lock so i'm using the same merge tags now you can create additional fields by click clicking on add fields and uh, give them your own merge tags and enter it over here for example if i wanted the phone so i would just write down the merge tag phone and i will pass the phone from the front end phone value from the front end to over here so that's how you uh, send over additional fields to mention. Once all is done, this sends back the response to the page. So if the response is less than 400, it's a successful call. So let's create some logic for that over here. So if rest.status is less than 400, then console log success. And I'm just console logging success. You can show a success message or redirect to another page. Else, I'll show the error message. But this time, I'm going to change the error message to something went wrong. You can customize the error message too if you want. I'm going to show the error message over here. Now, first of all, let's try. Let's, let's put a bug in this and let's try. To see what happens when it doesn't work so after basic there is a space required i'm just going to take out the space so it's not going to work now let's say i create json bone bone at gmail.com click on submit now as you can see something went wrong and this is the api response so it will show of course 400 which is unauthorized your request did not include an api key but now let's create a correct request. Let's give the space back over here and let's go to review JSON born JSON at born.com. Let's click on submit. As you can see, I see the success message printed over here. Now let's go ahead and actually view if this contact went through to my MailChimp list. And as you can see, it has been added to my mailchimp list json at one.com json one json one json at one.com so this is how you can easily send over your subscribers to your uh, mailchimp account without having to pay any app or any kind of service provider you basically just copy 30 lines less than 30 lines of code for backend and a small like whatever uh, input elements whatever data you need to collect to validate that data if everything is present and you send it to Mailchimp. And based on the logic way, you can either do a Wix location dot two to a success page, or there's like endless, uh, endless situations that you can handle. All right, take care and see you later.